Hello. Yesterday in class I got the question of how one might add reverb to a 5.1 surround project in Reaper without using any third-party surround reverb plugins. Uh, Reaper doesn't have its own surround reverb, but you can build it with multiple other reverb instances. So this is going to be a very quick run through. Um, the project's already set up here and I just want to show you some settings to check and how to do this. Now please note the parameters you might see on screen here for the reverb units and the panning. This is more proof of concept. This sounds fine but you really have to use your ears to make a judgment on what you need from the reverb. So I've arbitrarily set these values uh, to demonstrate this workflow. So for starters I have a voiceover track here. It has a simple male voiceover on and uh, just to run through the project settings here, this is the very simple everything out to the master uh, bus, no submasters, no groups, you should do that. I'll explain to you where the reverb might be rooted to in such a scenario, but let's first run through the project setup. Now in my main um, master track, as before we've got our 1-2 output for the stereo fold down, I could delete that now, but now the active one is uh, output 1-6 to six for my 5.1 surround. Also, I've got my voiceover track, and that has um, resurround pan that makes this surround. And that's what makes it a bit fiddlier in the simpler setup in terms of how the sends behave. Um, so I've got my six channel track that sends to the master send, and I've got my resurround pan for that track over here. And you can see it's one channel input for the mono voiceover and it is a 5.1 surround resurround pan and I've got my voiceover pan to the center speaker as would be a common thing to do. Nothing else has changed here but because you have this resurround pan plugin on this track it affects how you need to set up the sends. Now when you add a new send uh, you'll see that it will default uh, to post fader post pan which is a problem for this scenario because post fader post pan is also post effects and it's not going to send correctly because you've got this instance of resurround pan that affects the six one, one, one in six out routing for this track. So I've got my two sends here, um, one to the front reverb, one to the rear reverb and you can see I've set them both to pre-fader pre-effects. Now that's got some repercussions in terms of how you deal with automation uh, but I will get back to that. So in terms of the rest of the project, I have a track here for front reverb, for my front two left and right speakers, and my rear reverb, my rear two speakers, and both of them have a reverberate plugin on them. And I use the same preset as a starting point. I just grabbed for this dark corridor door, which I altered slightly. Now when you're using reverb in a send setting like this rather than an insert reverb, it is advisable to have 100% wet and no dry signal coming through because your track itself is going to be the dry signal. So you can see both these reverb instances have um, wet on naught and dry on negative infinity. Now remember you decorrelate signals with surround mixing so that you don't have the same thing coming out of too many speakers in terms of consistency for your audience. Now the reverbs are really going to decorrelate, but to decorrelate this further and also to create this illusion of a surround space, even though this is just a stereo reverb, I'm treating the front half of this room differently to the, the back half. Now the front, I've got slightly smaller at 80 room size, and I've got um, dampening at a certain value. And then the big difference here is I've got a 12 kilohertz low pass and 100 hertz high pass. So it's slightly wider frequency range than I use the rear. I don't want too much high frequency content behind me in this setting because I don't want people to look around. It must be a bit more subtle. So you'll see for the rear instance of reverberate, the room is slightly bigger. Um, but it's also more limited. It only goes up to eight and a half kilohertz and it only starts at about 600 hertz. As I said, arbitrary values, but it does decorrelate the signal light nicely. And then also importantly, to decorrelate other than on the spectral um, domain, I've also got a initial delay that's longer, 60 milliseconds here versus 20 milliseconds in front. Reason being, let's just say that it takes longer for that sound to get to me or to get to the back of the room. You can tailor these to sound as nicely as you want them to. So those are my two front and rear reverb tracks and you have to put them in the front and the rear. So you'll see here on the tracks, I first have the reverberate plugin and then re-surround pan last. Remember, 
treat the sound first with processing and then have resurround panned last in the chain when you need to put that somewhere in the space. And you'll see these are already open. This is my front reverb, just same setup, two channel input now because it's a stereo reverb that I'm using. And um, it's panned hard left, right to my front two speakers and the same for the rear reverb, rear two speakers, very simple. Now in this setup, we're gonna have reverb on left, right, left surround, right surround with nothing on the center channel. Um, which is not an uncommon thing to do with reverb treatment for 5.1 voices, uh, but I'll show you how you could get a little bit of reverb into the center channel if you wanted to. A better way would probably be to have a third track here that's a mono track with center reverb with another instance of reverberate that you tailor exactly what you want to come through on the center speaker with a third send for that, which I've not done now, so I'll, I'll show you a workaround. Um, this is YouTube, there's no surround, I'm not going to give you playback of this project, but for the class listening to that, I'll just give you the file that's open in front of me so you can open that and look at this project in Reaper, hopefully in the studio where you can listen to it in surround. Now things you have to check quite carefully. I've put my two reverb tracks in a folder track and um, as I've said previously I still need to make a video on the behavior of folder tracks in surround projects but do double check that your folder actually passes through the right audio. Now no groups or submasters so this is going out to the master but that folder would default to two tracks width so that won't send it properly you'll only get reverb in the front so that has to be a six width um, for this rear surround to come through probably because any track nested in a folder passes audio through there unless you set it up differently with sends and, and other routing. Um, nothing else is really done very specially here but if you play this back you can look at the meters you'll hear something over my um, boundary mic here. Dear Mary, you know I love you and the children dearly. I have sent you home to England because I feel a need. You would notice in the meters here the strong center channel coming through then the reverb and you can even see that initial delay in the rear channels of how those um, two meters for channel five and six bounce a bit slower and a bit lower. That's the thing I forgot to mention. In my sends for from this track, um, let me open that, you'll notice that this is where you control how much reverb you get, a um, common thing to do it that way, and I've got my front reverb at minus 16 and my rear reverb is minus 20. Again, more decorrelation but also less sound coming from the back because I want this speaker to be um, in front of the audience. Um, this would be the same way that you treat reverb in a sense setting if you set up this reverb, this is a large space, any other track that you want to make use of the surround reverb, you use sends and you can use the send level to determine how much reverb goes um, to that track. Two things I want to cover next in terms of how to do this in a group or stem setting and also the quirks in terms of the pre-fader effects that you have here. Now because this is pre-fader and pre-effects to get around resurround pan, that means that if you Automate, or if you change anything on the clip or item level here, no problem. But if you were to do, say, volume or level automation on this voiceover, the voice would go louder and softer. But the send level to your reverb use, you, um, tracks would stay constant. Meaning if you make the voice very soft, the reverb re re relatively would be much louder, which might be a problem. So you could just avoid that. But if that's how you automate, you may want to add one extra level where you have your voiceover track and you automate that, that then goes to another track where that track is the one with a resurround pan on and that's the one that has the sends to your reverb. Um, so you'll bypass that. So the, your main automated track would then not be an issue in terms of how much level that sends to the next track. So that's one way to do it, but I'm keeping it as simple as possible for this demo project. Then, in terms of where you'd route the reverb to in a better setup with your template where you've got your dialogue, your effects, and your music in separate groups or stems. Now, the way I would do it in terms of delivery is I have reverb with its stem. So if I deliver reverb with dialogue, that reverb has to be included in the dialogue stems. My stems need to add up to the mix um, and sum correctly to give you exactly the same as the final file that you render. Um, some people I've seen also have a dedicated reverb stem or group where they send all of that to to have that separate. That's got its 
uses. I, I, it's, I found that quite useful in terms of music stems, but in terms of sound for picture, I would say it is probably more common to have that um, you know, baked into the appropriate stem. You can still deliver more stems where you have undipped stems or stems without processing or reverb, but how you would then do that is rather than me here with a reverb being rooted directly to the master send um, as with your better setup where you've got the various track types going to their groups or their stems the reverb would have to go there too the effect of that is though that if you set up this large space and you want various voices to go to that's fine but if you say want some sound effects to go to it too you'd have to send up a separate set of reverbs like this dedicated to the sound effects ones so that they then can send um, on that signal to the correct group otherwise you're going to have sound effects reverb in your um, dialogue group if that makes sense um, anything else i want to say that's the main thing to cover uh, what I do want to show you that you can play around with, this is probably not the best way to do it, but it is a way that can get you some reverb in your center channel quite quickly, is uh, you can either just pan differently here. Now this is hard left and right, and if I were to pan that reverb, say like that, then a little bit of that would bleed into the center channel. I could also similarly change this to divergence. Now this is my front reverb resurround pan, and if I increase the divergence um, this will start bleeding over into the adjacent channels but this would not only get into the front but also to the rear channels so you could even play with this if you just have a front reverb with quite a lot of divergence that will already give you in a sense some form of surround reverb because you'll have most of the reverb in front left and right a little bit coming through on center and a little bit coming on your rear channels you don't have a lot of flexibility of tailoring that but that would give you some signal coming through on those channels. And you can see maybe that's enough in terms of the, the reverb use case that you have for the project. Okay, the last thing I want to do is just render this to show you that it does work correctly. Now with rendering in Reaper with surround, and especially if you've got groups and submasters in between, you have to check your routing very carefully, otherwise you might get an incorrect render. So I've got my render video um, window here. I am going to render the master mix, not stems, and my time selection is just the clip at the moment. Remember to check that you're rendering six channels. Our sample rate's 48 kilohertz. I'm going to stick with broadcast WAV here, and it's already a file name. Now you're going to see in the little picture of the, the render, there's obviously going to be a lot of a big waveform on the center channel three, and then a little bit of content on one and two, front, left, and right, and then very little content on the, the rear channel so there might be a little blip or two but you might not see much because I've intentionally have very little reverb on there um, but it's a good idea to check that picture in terms of that it render correctly this project did not include the blitzstone at the start um, always do that it really helps you to see if things have rooted correctly um, by looking at how all of those tones come through so let's see what this render looks like and there you can see my center channel, a little bit of reverb there, and there's, if you look very carefully, some blips on the rear channels. LFE, empty, I didn't send anything there. And you can see I happen to hit my loudness spec here by where I've leveled this voice by ear. So there you have it. Quite a simple way to create a surround reverb using just stock plugins directly in Reaper.